I'm sure many of you have heard of the app and website called Timu, where you can buy products directly from Chinese manufacturers. And yes, if you do a search on their website for car audio amplifiers, you will find dozens upon dozens of amplifiers, including quality names like Curl, ePath China, VJ or VDJ, also our favorite German sold out company, Blaupunkt. Also, one of the most prevalent brands on there for car audio amplifiers is this B Mines. Make people fall in love at first sight with B Mines. So, would you please, B Mine? Are you not entertained? This is not a Mickey Mouse program. I know this is not some Valentine's Day stunt. This brand's been around on these Chinese websites for a while. We came across this five channel amp for $104. I had to buy one from Timu and sell out all my information just so I could show you guys what this is all about. So let's check it out. The only thing in the box is the owner's manual, which covers four different models of the B-Mines brand. But here we have the five channel. We're going to get into the specs here a little bit later in the video. Let's take a closer look at the amp itself. We'll get it taken out of its plastic wrapping so you can see. Here it is. You can see the size. It's not very large at all. Also, the model number will show that here shortly. And also, it has some numbers printed on the front. Now, are these legit or are these max power numbers? We'll figure that out here shortly. Again, the size, my hand pretty much covers it up all the way. But enough talk about the size, let's move on to the inputs of the amplifier so we can see the switches and settings, etc., including the options for channels one and two, crossover either bypass or high pass, frequency adjustment, as well as a gain. It's the same thing for channels three and four as well. This is a five channel amplifier. We also have settings for the turn on mode, either remote or DC offset for high level inputs. The input mode allows you to switch between two, four, or five channel of inputs. Then for the sub channel, we have a variable bass boost from zero to 12 dB, frequency for the low pass filter and a gain control as well. We have six RCAs for five channels of RCA inputs. That's right, the sub channels are just summed together. Now there's a lot of options here on this side of the amp, but there's one thing I'm sure that you guys notice is not here. That is a subwoofer level control. That's a big fault in my mind. Now let's switch around to the other side of the amp. We can see options such as the four gauge power and ground. These are the angle terminals, so you have to strip your wires kind of long and push them in pretty far to the amp. We also have two 40 amp ATM mini fuses. Those are really small kind of oddball fuses. And we have power and protect LEDs as well. Also the 12 gauge speaker outputs for all the channels with the over and under style, meaning positive on top, negative on the bottom, and channel five is at the end. And there you have it. Those are small terminals there on the end for about 12 gauge wire if you're lucky. But that's what the amp looks like overall. We'll do a fly over here so you can see a better shot of the heat sink. And yeah, the silk screening of the logos is not the best. CT900.5D. Also, 160 watts times four plus 300 watts by one. Is that for real? Also, the brand name which will steal your heart and soul with its name. Be minds. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Big dummy jokes aside, as far as dimensions go, 8.9 inches on the long side, 5.3 inches for the width, and 1.9 inches for the height. As far as ratings go, 100 watts by 4 at 4 ohms, 160 by 4 at 2 ohms, 320 by 2 bridged at 4 ohms, and the sub channel is only rated at 1 ohm at 300 watts. Now we have the amplifier on the bench here. You can see the power up sequence. It is in the bridge mode for this video here, but for these first tests, we're gonna do the four channel mode so you can see the actual ratings at four channels. Let's check the amp dyno in the settings. We have the power output in watts. The ohm load's in the middle. The voltage of the dyno is on the right. We'll also have the clamp, but it's really hard to calculate efficiency on a five channel amp. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pumped. Let's let the healing begin. First up, we're gonna show the four ohm, four channel mode. We do have all the channels loaded on the amplifier at four ohms for this test. So here we go, certified using the one kilohertz track. And we're rated 100 watts by four, and we get right at it. We're actually a little bit under the voltage, right around 14 volts. It's rated at 14.4. So I would say it's definitely a pass. Let's see if it gives any more uncertified up to the clipping point. And you're going to see here, it's like very similar. It's right, right at the same. 99 and 98, right at 14 volts. What about when we switch it to the dynamic test? 
Does the amp put out any more power dynamically? And the answer is not really. It's like literally the same. Uh, I lied. It jumped a couple watts, but not much more. 101 and 102 at 14.25. Now we're going to try two ohms in the four channel test. Again, all the channels on the amp are loaded at two ohms, except for the sub channel, which is loaded at four ohms. Certified test to 1% distortion, rated 160 watts by four. Look at this, 154 and 153. So we're right at it. Again, our voltage is a little bit lower. So if we were at 14.4, I think we would definitely get it. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, pretty much identical to the previous test. We got a little bit less, I think, because the voltage dropped just a little bit more. What about dynamically? We're sending the one kilohertz pulse tone, and yes, 185 watts. Again, remember, that's times four. We're just showing two of the four channels here. Kind of wild from this little tiny amp. Now let's take the four channels and bridge them down to two. This is where the amp is rated 320 watts times two at 14.4 volts. So here we go, we'll run the certified test again to 1% distortion. Again, we're a little bit under the 14.4, but look, we're right at the 320. We got 317 and 328. My mind is kind of blown, honestly, that they put the correct numbers on the amp and this is sold out of Timu. Anyway, uncertified to clipping, literally pretty much the same as the certified test, just a, like a watt more, which is nothing. What about dynamically? Check this out. Yo, 372, 366 at 14.27. Now let's move on to the sub channel of this five channel amp, which is the last two terminals there at the very end on the right. And this amp is not even rated at four ohms. So we have no idea what kind of power it's supposed to put out. It's only rated at one ohm. So we're gonna try four ohms, 40 Hertz, certified test first to 1% distortion. And here we go, 101 watts at 14.3. And to be completely honest with you, in 2024, a car audio amp that has a sub channel that only does 100 watts, that's not very impressive at all. Uncertified to clipping, we get 103 at 14.21. Then we'll try the dynamic test to see if it gives us any more juice. And let's see here. Looks about right about the same. 101 at 14.1. Now let's drop it a little bit lower to two ohms on the sub channel. Again, no ratings are provided, but we're gonna find out what the true output is here. Certified to 1% distortion at 40 Hertz, 180 Watts at 14. Point Two, six. That is still honestly pretty anemic for an amplifier these days on the subwoofer channel. But we're just showing you here what we get. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Just a couple watts more. 183 at 14.22. Now let's try that dynamic pulse track at 40 hertz. See what we get. Can we bust 200 watts? No, we can't even bust 180. <laughs> 179 at 13.98. Next up, we're gonna try the one ohm test, and this is where it is rated 300 watts at 14.4 volts. They don't give any frequencies that this was tested at, but we're gonna try it at 40 hertz. Here we go, up to 1%. We get 295 at 14.13. So voltage is just a couple tenths shy, and the wattage is only five watts away from actually hitting the 300. Same thing to clipping. I consider this a pass because it is so close. What about dynamically? Can we get over that 300? Again, this amp does not have a lot of dynamic power. In fact, it seems to be pretty similar to the other tests. In this case, a little bit less, 289 at 13.81. Here I have all the results on the screen, so you can pause this if you wanna see each individual test and the result. Just showed all these tests though in video form, but you guys like to see it uh, visually. So there you have it. Pretty much did rate it at every single ohm load. Now let's move on to the speaker test. Let's try Smokey's Lounge with the Timu 5 channel.
Savard 6.5 inch high Q subwoofer, has an RMS power handle and 350 watts, sports a 2 inch voice coil, 11 millimeter one way X Max, 22 millimeter overall, 80 ounce Y35 magnet, long strand Kevlar cone for added strength cast aluminum basket as well as integrated 12 gauge spring-loaded terminals overall these are great subwoofers i've used them for several years thanks to savard for sponsoring this video if you want to check these out make sure you check links in the video description use code wow7 for seven percent off these or other savard subwoofers let's go on to more flexing Now it's time to flip this amplifier over to find out what's inside this tiny China five channel. There's six screws on the bottom. Save the best one for last and we'll take the bottom plate off and check out these guts. Man, that's a lot packed in this tiny amp and a lot of tiny components. There you can see the power supply transformer, some capacitors. Now let's do a flyover so you can see the components including this input board that includes all the switches and settings for the crossovers and gain adjustments and all that. Also, you can see the capacitors here for the power supply section. These are 25 volt, 2200 microfarad. There's three of them. And then we have 50 volt, 2200 microfarad on the subwoofer channel. And then for the other channels, we have 330 microfarad, 50 volts. Those are very small. And check out these input filtering caps, 10 microfarad, 50 volts. That's for the RCA inputs if you're using high level. This amp appears to use micro size class D chip amps for the main four channels. On the sub channel, it appears to be a full bridge class D amp. Now let's talk pros and cons of this amp. First up, it's inexpensive, no doubt $104. Ultra compact, it did meet rated power. Sound quality was okay, nothing to write home about. Two, four or five channels of input, which is very useful variable bass boost, and three, four, or five channel operation. Things that could be better, there's no remote bass adjustment for the sub channel, which is a bummer. The sub channel needs to be a little bit more powerful in my opinion. The speaker terminals are very small. The crossovers are not very flexible. Also these odd fuses that they use, you may have to buy some of those as I did because I didn't have any of these. Thanks again to Savard for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check the links in the video description. Use code WALWOW7 for 7% off any purchase there. Overall, we could not complain the amp met its rated power, but yes, you're selling your soul by giving your information to Timu. They'll send you five to 10 emails a day. So go ahead and support me at patreon.com slash old school stereo. Save your money and don't buy this one. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Welcome to the after the credits crew who stick around to see the extra test. Let's try 0.8 dynamic on the sub channel. Here we see 322 watts at 13.75 volts, 40 hertz pulse track. What about 0.67? Let's drop it on down. See what we get here. Can we get even more? 357 at 13.74. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Till next time, Big D, I'm out.